And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's Rowdy.com Big Three. My name is Bass Masters. That's Buzz Cutler. And look who we have here, Jeff Gluck of SB Nation, once again, back on the show. Congratulations for getting a return call. Thank you. <laughs> We're doing our typical Wednesday quote edition, Big Three, Buzz Cutler, and you've picked some uh, fine selections from the NASCAR world today. Yes, well, and from the IndyCar world as well, because we're going to be starting off with somebody who has a foot in both worlds. But will she come 2012? Let's listen to what Danica Patrick said a couple of months ago at the media tour. I, I think any time that, you know, that opportunities um, open up, and it's, it's time to just be open-minded. So what is her best opportunity, Jeff Luck? Is it to stick well, with the car or come on over? Her best opportunity, which is what she's probably doing right now, is um, playing both sides of it. <laughs> right. And, you know, kind of flirting with all of us and teasing a little bit, you know, to get some leverage, right? I don't mind being flirted with or teased by Danica. I can really? Just admit that. No, nah, I'm, I'm not that, you know. So, so do you think she'll end up in NASCAR, or do you think she'll end up back in IndyCar? Well, I mean, she kind of has to make a decision at this point, right? The dabbling days are going to be over at the end of the season. Says who, though? Like? I mean, it doesn't have to be. She no, can do whatever doesn't. she wants. She can write her own ticket. You right. know what I mean? Not a speeding ticket, which we'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll later. Get to we'll get to later. That one. I know. Hasn't Danica already proved that she's a mediocre IndyCar driver, So, and, and there's still questions? <laughs> so there's nothing left to prove because well, she's... not in IndyCar. <laughs> I mean, you know... Wait, though, that was her goal, to prove that she was mediocre? No, but I'm... <laughs> <laughs> like, I've proved, I've came... <laughs> you know I've I'm done saying. what I set out to do here in IndyCar. It's time to prove I can be she a mediocre NASCAR. <laughs> she's going to stop flirting with you. She's had <laughs> enough time in an IndyCar seat to sort of realize her potential. Maybe there's more potential for her in NASCAR. Isn't it time for her to... Test well, there's that. there's more potential dollar signs in NASCAR, yeah. which is what I think is behind this. You know, her brand, right? She always talks about my brand. You know, it's it's about the brand. So NASCAR would help her build her brand a lot more, um, which is what I think is a, is a big motivation for her. I don't, I mean, it's I'm not going to go out and say she's going to be competitive, especially if she comes to Sprint Cup. She's not going to finish. She said Sprint Cup in 2013. I know, but possibly some races next year. I don't think we've seen enough of Danica behind the wheel of a stock car to really understand how good she could possibly be. Now, granted, if you look at how she's done an Indy car, it feels like a long shot that she would ever be a, a star caliber driver in the Sprint Cup Series. I mean, that feels like a long shot. But if you're Danica, I, I feel like this is the new ground. This is the place to go. This is the... The, the opportunity, the big opportunity. And she talked about opportunity. The big opportunity is to come over to NASCAR. That's the big opportunity. Danica but will still be a star regardless of how she performs on the racetrack. I, I think that's it, true. It could that take is the true. real shine off of her if she comes over and fails, but I think that's what she's going to do. But it hasn't already. I mean, she's won one Indy car race, in a fuel mileage race at that, in her whole career. Look, I she's mean, not a superstar Indy car driver just purely on the performance front. But she's front. a superstar. She offers that potential or that sense that hey, a, a woman driver can come out and win a race, which she has won a race, fuel mileage or not. So I think the big opportunity for her is in NASCAR, and I think that's where she's going to end up next year. All I right, really let, do. Let's move on to issue number two. Yesterday, Kyle Busch got cited for reckless driving up near Troutman, North Carolina. What was it? 120, 128, 128 in a, in a 45. 45. That's not the first time. Let's listen to what he said a few years ago back in Richmond when he first got cited for reckless driving. There's so many different ways to be accused of reckless driving, I guess, from what I've heard, that you can be going 120 mile an hour in an 80, 80 zone or whatever, and that's reckless driving. Now, we should be clear that the reckless driving citation in Richmond didn't have to do with going so fast over the speed limit, and he was just expressing surprise in a way that you could actually get a reckless driving citation for going a certain right well that was like for chirping his tires right i mean right. exactly and peeling so, out in a parking lot and, and or he something. referenced going 120 in an 80 well 128 in a 45 is a significant increase uh over that so what's your take on, on what happened yesterday well i mean obviously it probably wasn't the best thing the smartest thing he's ever done <laughs> i still think that I mean, I, I'm not condoning this in any way, but let's uh, let's just try to keep it in perspective. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that want to string the guy up for this, you know? But it wasn't a DUI. You know, Michael Annette's thing to me was a lot worse early in the year where he was just raging drunk, right? It was blotto. And, and, and it's, not a, it's not drugs. Um, it wasn't an assault on anybody. So, you know, I don't think, you know, a race car driver who's used to go, going 200 miles per hour Going 128 miles per hour. Yes, I mean it was on a public road, so that's not good. Is this a but it's not apology couch? Yeah, are you gonna yeah, Are you gonna yeah, do that I too? I think you're soft pedaling this a little bit, man. <laughs> All right. I mean, look, it was what 70 something miles over the speed limit on a public road. It was 
reckless, it was dangerous, it was irresponsible, it was idiotic. Now, I've gotten speeding tickets, I've gotten a lot of speeding tickets, but I've never gone 75 miles over the speed limit on a public road, and I don't care if you're a race car driver, I don't care if you're a fine upstart human being, it was a stupid, reckless, dangerous thing to do. I, I'm not disagreeing with that, but I, what I'm saying is somebody at that going at that speed that's used to going at that speed, I think can handle it a lot better than so we can. He should be handling it on the racetrack. He, he should. He, he I'm not. I don't disagree with that. The only thing I'll say, and I, I agree with you that you know it wasn't a DUI, it wasn't drugs, it wasn't an assault. But the reason, say, a DUI is so bad is that you're going out on the streets and you're taking other people's lives into your hands. And at a certain rate of speed, on a certain kind of road, aren't you kind of doing the same thing? Absolutely. Aren't uh, you kind of the same? I agree. When, you know, the 76-year-old lady pulls out of her driveway and you can't stop. Oh, there's Kyle Busch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. And that's the last thing she gets to think on this earth right. is there's Kyle Busch. Damn, that's a nice car. <laughs> you know, exactly. and if so, so I think that's where... You know, okay, 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour over the speed limit. If the speed limit were 80 and you were doing 120, that, you know, once you get to a certain rate of speed on a certain kind of road, to me, you're you're getting close to DUI territory as well, far as the risk to others if goes. If the speed limit is, is 45, then that suggests that actually you need to take it a little bit slower on this Because road. there's some turns and there's some things you right. can't see. And, and no matter how talented you are... The conditions are not right for this kind and of race. And if it was any other driver, test. I would have the same reaction. I mean, it's not about Kyle Busch to me. Right. I mean, could we start talking about, oh, maybe he's not the mature new Kyle Busch? Yeah, but I don't even think that's the issue. If this was Dale Earnhardt Jr., I'd have the same reaction, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. probably wouldn't do this. Let me let me ask you something real quick before yeah. we move on. Mm -hmm. Do you think if this had been on a highway, 120 mile per hour in a straight line, on a highway, would would do you think people would be less upset about it? Yes, a highway it would, would seem be, less reckless. It would, would probably it be 65, 70 mile an hour speed limit anyway. Right. right. So I do think With that's an, an issue. A nice wide road where you've got good sight lines. I, I think you know. So the more of the issue here was the curvy, the, the curviness of the road. You and know, the, and the and the number one twenty eight on a forty five. The difference. Right. 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 You're like almost triple the speed limit at that point. Okay, we're right. moving on now. To the original four time, Jeff Gordon. He's in 14th place right now. Let's hear what he has to say about his concerns vis a vis the chase for the championship. If we finish where we're capable of, then I don't think we'll have any problem making it into the top 10. But I will say the nice, comforting thing right now is that we do have a win. And if we can get, you know, one or two more wins, I think that could possibly secure us into to the chase. All right, Jeff Gluck. Yes. He's not Should concerned. <laughs> Jeff Gordon be worried or not? Um, He's in 14th place. What do we figure? 29? I, I still think it's too there. early to be worried. Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, I, I think there's just time to get up there. There's a couple guys in the top 10 right now that feel like they're sliding back. Yes. Um, I mean, Kurt, Kurt Bush. Bush. being the primary. Yeah. The real question is, which one of the guys outside of the chase right now is going to catch Kurt Bush? Bush, because right. one of them is. You've got Denny Hamlin. You've got Greg Biffle. You've got Jeff Gordon. And Tony Stewart is still behind Kurt Busch, even though he's in 10th. One of those guys is going to pass, if not all of them, are going to pass Kurt Busch. Right. One of those guys is going to take his spot in the chase. And, and, and maybe opinion. Stewart. And maybe Tony Stewart, too, because he hasn't yep. run as, he as hasn't well as he usually does. Well either. So the question is, which one of those guys? And I think that's the problem Jeff Gordon has. It doesn't do him any good to but worry. has Gordon really run that well, though? No, he hasn't. No. And here's the other thing. When he said, oh, well, I've got a win to fall back on, how many people are we giving that wild card spot to? And is one win going to be enough? I think the point here is they have to, to, to get that wild card spot from Jeff Gordon. They would have to either get two wins or get a win and be further up, up in, in points. points. What I'm just saying is, is so I, don't I think, think he can in, rest on that one win right now. I wouldn't want to, but I think he's still in okay shape to make the chase. I, I just don't think it's time to panic. It's it's early enough. It, we're not even halfway to the chase, are we? No. No. So it's it's there's plenty of time. I a veteran guy like that is not gonna right. within, panic, you know what I mean? Shouting distance. But not running terribly well. Agreed. No. To pick it up on the down. No. Stuff. But Alan Gustafson, I think, I think, will get his stuff not together. Not only that, but Jeff you know? Gordon could get another win, and that would that's really lock him into the wild card. True. That's true. So I, I think it's too early for him to panic. I agree with him. Jenny so. Hamlin is now ahead of Jeff Gordon. You see, well, the problem right. is see, game. You know how the fast it can turn you've got around. A number of guys that are still out trying to get in. That's the problem. It's not that I can't run better. It's not that I can't finish better. It's like. 
Well, so can Greg Biffle. Well, so can Denny Hamlin. Exactly. That's the problem that you've got. All right, that has been your Rowdy.com Big 3 for today. Our special thanks to a very special guest, Jeff Gluck of SBNation.com. Insightful as always, sir. Thank you. I don't know about that, but oh, I, I, I appreciate you saying that. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com. 